Tony Decker. I'm a registered nurse, and this is Nursing Analysis. Today, we will talk about the different types of receptors in the circulatory system and major organs, the chemicals that can alter their functions, and the reactions that take place within the major organs because of these alterations. This series of events and reactions is especially important to understand before we start talking about the many medications that are used to treat cardiac conditions, which will be included in future videos. Two important terms to open this lecture with are agonist and antagonist. An agonist is a substance which initiates a physical response when combined with a receptor. An antagonist is a substance that interferes with or inhibits the physiological action of another. So, in pharmacology, we utilize agonist type medications to initiate an action on a receptor to stimulate its effects. We utilize antagonist type medications to prevent stimulation of an action. The nervous system utilizes the autonomic nervous system, which is our fight or flight response, to release chemicals from either of its two sub-branches. The sympathetic, which can be thought of as the adrenaline producing, vital organ only response, or in the parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest response. The sympathetic nervous response increases the heart rate, blood pressure, and intensity of the contractions of the heart whereas the parasympathetic counters the actions of the sympathetic responses. Now we will discuss the receptors, which include alpha-1 and alpha-2 and beta-1 and beta-2. Alpha-1 receptors are located in the arteries, and when alpha-1 receptors are stimulated, this causes the arteries to constrict, which causes the blood pressure to increase. Alpha-2 receptor stimulation causes vasodilation, which will lower the blood pressure. Alpha receptors are stimulated by catecholamines, both epinephrine and norepinephrine, except in the skeletal muscles, which are stimulated by nicotinic receptors. The arteries in the skeletal muscles must remain open to utilize extra oxygen and nutrients in times of stress. This brings us to two more important terms, sympathomimetic and sympatholytic. Agents that activate adrenergic receptors are called sympathomimetics and the agents that block adrenergic receptors are called sympatholytics. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are produced by the body and are adrenergic agonists. Alpha-1 receptors cause a stimulating response on the arteries that are mediated by increased intracellular calcium located on vascular smooth muscle throughout the body. When activated, these receptors cause vasoconstriction. They are also located in the iris of the eye and cause mydriasis or dilation of the pupil. They are also located on the urinary sphincter, which can cause contractions of the muscles and can lead to urinary retention. The liver 
is also stimulated by alpha-1 receptors. This causes glycogenolysis, which when glycogen is converted into glucose. The kidneys also contain alpha-1 receptors, and when stimulated, this leads to inhibition of renin release. All these stimulated effects are a result of sympathetic responses. So remember, in alpha-1 response, arteries are stimulated. There will be increased peripheral resistance, which increases blood pressure. Pupils will dilate, and the bladder sphincter closes. We will now discuss alpha-2 receptors. These receptors have inhibitory effects that include stopping the release of norepinephrine and acetylcholine, stopping the release of insulin, which will increase the blood sugar, and decreasing salivary production. They can also disrupt the effects of the beta receptors, which can lead to platelet aggregation. It works by negative feedback to the beta receptor effects. When their actions are too high or too much, the alpha-2 receptors inhibit further potential. We shall now discuss beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. Beta-1 receptors are located in the heart and kidneys. When activated in the heart, they increase electrical conductivity, which in turn increases the heart's contractility and increases the heart rate. In the kidneys, they increase renin release, which increases the blood pressure. Beta-1 receptors stimulate lipolysis, which is the metabolism of fat. Now, we will talk about beta-2 receptors. These are located in the lungs and on bronchial smooth muscle, and when activated, this leads to bronchial dilation. They are also located in vascular muscle and the smooth muscle of the arteries. When activated, they lead to relaxation of the blood vessels or vasodilation. Beta-2 receptors are also located in the smooth muscle of the GI system and when activated decreases gastric motility. The uterus also contains beta-2 receptors which can decrease contractions and inhibit labor. The pancreas also contains beta-2 receptors and when stimulated increases the release of insulin. We must mention there are also beta-3 receptors. These receptors are involved in lipolysis, which remember is the breakdown of fat. These receptors can also relax the bladder and cause urinary retention. We shall now talk briefly about the three catecholamines in the body that initiate the sympathetic effects. These adrenergic agonists are epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Epinephrine is used in the treatment of anaphylaxis. It acts on both alpha and beta receptors. Epinephrine can be given in injection form only, never orally. Epinephrine causes vasoconstriction when alpha-1 receptors are stimulated by its attachment. It decreases mucosal edema, which helps with airway obstruction. It increases blood pressure when treating shock. It increases cardiac output when attached to beta-1 receptors, which helps in conditions like cardiac arrest. Epinephrine also works on beta-2 receptors, 
causing bronchodilation, which is useful to treat status asthmaticus. Norepinephrine mainly stimulates alpha receptors. This causes vasoconstriction, which increases the blood pressure. It does not affect beta receptors and is mainly used to treat cardiac arrest and hypotensive shock. The third catecholamine, dopamine, stimulates both alpha and beta receptors and dopamine receptors depending on the given dose. At low therapeutic levels, it only acts on dopamine receptors. With higher levels, it will act on beta-1 receptors and at even higher levels will act on alpha-1 receptors. Dopamine is mainly used to treat heart failure and hypotensive shock. More about dopamine receptors will be discussed in future videos. So, everyone knows what time it is. It's our rhyme time review. So here we go. We go. <laughs> Learning about the effectors that act on the receptors, alpha one and alpha two. What are the things that they can do from me to you, we will also go through both beta 1 and beta 2. Let's start our list so nothing is missed, including the terms ag and antagonist. The agonist loves to act, increasing the potential. Now this is a fact. For the antagonist, action is what it lacks, as it blocks the passage in its tracks. Now comes a decision we must face, the autonomic nervous system we must trace. It controls organ systems, speed and pace. So major components of survival we do not waste, in the face of a threat the sympathetic reactions are met. We can no longer wait as we increase our blood pressure and heart rate. When we need to rest, the parasympathetic is vest and the vessels are no longer pressed. In times of stress, we are unable to digest. Our pupils are dilated and we are able to see. Though our secretions are dry, and we are unable to pee. So alpha-1 is our prescription to cause vasoconstriction where alpha-2 makes sympathetic action stop as we can see by blood pressure drop. Beta-1 has its own part as it works on both kidneys and heart. Beta-2 has its relating compilation as it works in the lungs causing bronchodilation. Beta-3 also needs to be mentioned as its effects can cause urinary retention. So sympathetic to never forget it. Write the prescription for vasoconstriction. The heart can no longer wait. It must beat faster to increase its rate. While the pupil of the eyes dilate the body breaks down what it needs most as glycogen is converted to glucose. Now check your prescription for what is included in vasoconstriction. As the body prepares to tussle, we need to increase oxygen to every muscle. To achieve such a rate in this area, we must vasodilate. Improved vision to our eyes as our mucous membranes begin to dry. So now we have the ability to better see. But we must remember we are still unable to pee. Earlier we stated that motility has waited as its importance was found 
to be unrelated, but now brings on concerns of constipated. So when it is time to rest, the parasympathetic will address, and once again, we can digest. For anaphylaxis, Epi works the fastest, so make sure to keep it in stock, as this is needed to treat cardiac shock. Norepinephrine is next, used for shock and cardiac arrest. Next on the scene is dopamine. Its effects are the most dependent on the given dose. <laughs> Your continued support is greatly appreciated. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share to help enable the production of future educational content. Special thanks to Medical Prep Institute of Tampa for sponsoring these videos.